Good afternoon, welcome back to the next video in this playlist of creating a game inside of the Unreal Engine. So previously we have left off, we've created a couple of materials, we've applied one of them to what will be our floor, and we're now coming back in and we're going to start adding blueprints to this, which will be the fundamental logic driving factor within our project. And this is something I wanted to mention now actually, is that I'm going to do the whole thing first of all in blueprints for this project, but this is going to be a really simple way as well to get into C++ programming. If I was to do a follow-up and show a comparison to how Blueprints and C++ work. So if people are interested in that, I don't know how much interest there is in learning C++ for the Unreal Engine. But if people are interested, then do leave comments below about that. And what I'll do is once I finish this off and create the main logic in Blueprints, it means we can come back and really easily then update things into C++ and people can see how to start scripting inside of Unreal and C++, if that's something you're interested in. Anyway, what we're going to do for today is we're going to go to our Blueprints folder. We will right click in here and we're going to create our first type of Blueprint class. So if we go to the option here, Blueprint Classes, or the option Blueprint Class, this will give us our Blueprint Classes. And what we want to control inside of the engine is a type of pawn. This is another one of those things that you'll be getting used to as you get more familiar with the engine. But at a very high level, all you need to know is that pretty much everything that a player will ever control inside of the Unreal Engine is a type of pawn. So you see we have things here like characters as well. Um, and even that says that characters are pawns that have a mesh. So a pawn is a very basic version of this and that's all we will be needing for our cube. But if you had things like characters, you can have different more specific types of pawns which then have their own classes. So if we select our pawn for now, we need to give this a name and the standard naming convention for Unreal, which is going to be good for you to get used to, is a higher case B and P for blueprint, followed by an underscore and then the unique name for your class. In this case, we're going to call this player because this will be representing the player's avatar. So with that done, we now have our player blueprint ready for us to interact with. So again, we're going to double click to open this. This will open up in the top bar. And what we can see now is we have our viewport, which has currently got a default scene route over in our component section. And this is really just a temporary visual aid to show us if we have the blueprint selected in the world. So as an example, if we drag this in, we can see that we get this sphere and that's just the default scene route, which is not gonna show if we press play and look around, we can see that that isn't actually in our world. And that's another thing is that we do start in a first person perspective. And in fact, if we use the uh, WASD movements, then we can kind of fly around when a kind of spectator's view. This is set by default, and we will be looking at that and overriding that very shortly. Back in our player blueprint though, what we want to do is start adding some of the main components of our player's avatar, which in this case is going to be the cube. So to do this, we will hit the add component button, and we have a lot of different options under here, and there is an option for a cube, and that will work perfectly fine for the representation of our character. So we're gonna select that. Uh, we can change this to be called player, and then I'm doing this by the way by hitting F2. You can either double click on the thing that you want to rename or hit F2 and that is a shortcut for renaming. And then finally we want to grab the player cube that we just created and we're going to drag this on top of, you can see we're now highlighting the default scene route. We'll drag that on top and the default scene route will go away. So now our visual representation inside or outside of the game is purely this cube. Now with that done we can go back to our main window we will want to click in here and that will update that we have our player cube and we can now press play and we can see that that's just gonna hover around in the sky. Following along as uh, Bracky did, we're gonna make this a physics-based game. So we want to come in and we will enable physics back in the BP underscore player. We want to simulate physics, which is over here in the details panel on the right. We're gonna let it auto estimate the, uh, the mass, which we'll come back to later. And we will make sure that we have gravity enabled as well, which is set by default. So again, if we hit compile, we go back in and press play now. If we look around, we can see that the player is now physics based. Perfect. Now inside of the player blueprint again, if we go over to the event graph tab, which is down here, this is where the bulk of the logic inside of blueprints is run. So we have three different options. We have an event begin play, which is really the start function of the blueprint. So this is where anything that you need to set ahead of time or at the beginning of play, such as a health value or something, we can set this up in the event begin play to make sure it always starts at the same thing. Uh, we have the actor begin overlap, which you can just remove. That would be if we wanted to check the entire actor has collided with something. In this case, when we get to that, we're going to be using the player collision instead. So specifically the cubes collider. 
and then we have our event tick which is just our main update function within the Unreal Engine so this is run every so many times per second so it's based on the frame rate so if we have a quick example of using the event begin play to add some force to the player or the, the cube what we want to do is we want to add an impulse to the cube so if we just drag off of here and start searching for what we're looking to do so we now have two options we have the option to add impulse or add impulse at location so we don't want to do this at a location we just want to do it to the entire object and we can see here in brackets we have the word player so player actually refers to the name that we've given our cube if we'd left that as cube this would be adding impulse to cube because it's the only component that this blueprint can see that it can add impulse to so it's quite clever it makes some of these assumptions for you which is really really handy and let's say that we want this to be launched upwards so up in unreal is the z-axis we have the axis here which would be forward left right and up so let's just say we want to launch this 5,000 at a velocity of 5,000 in the z-axis. And that is pretty much it. So this is actually going to work perfectly fine to just show us that when we hit play, if we're looking at the cube, we'll see that this is launched upwards. Um, one easy way to do this, rather than pressing play, you can see there we have to kind of snap around and try and see it quickly. If we just look at the area that we want to inspect when we hit play and press simulate, this is kind of like pressing play, but we don't get dragged into controlling that first person spectator. Now, we can also see that nothing really happened there. That's not because this isn't working. It's just because this is such a uh, heavy object and this is quite a low force. So we need to add a few extra zeros here. We're going to hit compile again and we'll press play. And that was a few too many zeros. So this is just tweaking at the moment. We'll go back again. We'll hit simulate. And there we go. We can see that that has now been launched up into the air. So we need a fairly big number, but not too excessive. And again, we're going to be refining and tweaking this in a lot more of a logical way when we come into actually adding the movement. But the way that we're going to be driving the movement of our player is we're going to add this to the event tick. So rather than just doing this once on event begin play, we're going to be doing this constantly on the event tick in a certain direction to make the player move forward. Now, before we get into any of that, there's a few other things we want to do in this blueprint in the component section. So if we go over and add another component, this time we want something called a spring arm which we can just scroll down and we can find down here. Leaving this called spring arm is perfectly fine because that is exactly what it is. And we'll see that this has been nested below the player. So this means this is actually attached to the player in the viewport. So if we were to move the cube around, it just means the spring arm is gonna go with it, which is exactly what we want. And then with the spring arm selected, we wanna do the same thing again. We're gonna add another component. We want this to nest onto the spring arm, which is why we still want this selected. And we're gonna go down to camera. So we're actually gonna have the camera directly inside of this blueprint. Now what you can see again is that's nested down. So now if we move the spring arm about, the camera will go with it. And this is the camera that we'll be viewing throughout the game. Now the final thing we want to do is we will select the spring arm. We will come in and select in this viewport and press E, which is a shortcut for the rotate tool. We have W, which is the transform tool to move things around, which is what you started on by default. Uh, we have E for rotate tool and we have R for the scaling tool. So we can scale this up and down. But what we want to do is we are going to rotate this around. So we're going to grab this green arc here, which is representing the Y axis. We want to rotate around the, the Y axis. And we're just going to give this a 20 degree rotation, which means when we look at this, we're going to be looking down at the player from a kind of angle like so. We also want to move this back a little bit. So 300 on the target arm length is a bit short. So on the right hand side under the details, if we change this to be 500, this will push the spring arm further back, making the camera further away. So generally you don't make these changes directly to the camera. So we can apply the transform changes, the rotation and everything to the spring arm, which means that the camera can be left zeroed out and it just makes it a little bit easier to work with. And that will again make sense as you come to use this a bit more often. With those changes made though, that is our player done for now. Now this will come with some issues when it comes to uh, rotation and moving the cube around but I wanted to leave those in so that we can actually fix them as we approach them so it'll make a bit more sense but for now this is going to be uh, this will work uh, it's just going to have some rotational issues so coming back out we want to go back into the blueprints folder we're going to right click again and create a new blueprint class and this class is going to be of the type game mode base now the game mode is basically where you put most of your logic so the overarching logic in the game will be put in the game mode this can be used for things in single player games like keeping track of score, number of players, uh, the type of player to spawn in, which is exactly why we're creating this now. So following the same naming conventions that I mentioned previously, we're going to call this BP underscore game mode. 
Okay, so with that done, we have our BP underscore game mode. And if we double click into this, with the game mode open, all we want to do is we're going to come over to our options over here on the right hand side in the details panel. And we want to select the default pawn class, so the default class for the player to control, to be our BP underscore player. And at the moment, that's the only thing that we can change, but that's the most important thing. So we'll hit compile. We're going to come over to our project settings. Back in the maps and modes that we used earlier for the maps, I'm already here by default. If you're not, then just remember it's down here. On the left hand side, we've got the maps and modes. Where we've already changed the startup map, we now want to change the default game mode for the project as well. So we can see that it creates, like it did with the map, kind of a temporary default game mode as well. What we want to do is change this in the drop down to the game mode that we've just selected. And then if we drop down the selected game mode options, we can see that this will automatically pick up that we've changed the default player or pawn type in this game mode that we now have as default to be our player. So what should happen is if we remove the cube that we created earlier or the player that we added in earlier, there's something already in this map which is called a player start. So we can see over in the world outliner where we can select things from within the map, we have something called a player start. Now the player start is quite simply a location for the default pawn to be spawned at. So if you have a game mode with the default pawn selected or chosen and you have a player start in the world, then this is kind of like a spawn point for that. And this just saves us from manually adding in players into the world. And actually when you start thinking about this, this is really sensible and quite a logical way to approach things. Because if you have levels where you have checkpoints and things, you can create different checkpoints with player starts and it will automatically just spawn in characters where you want them to be. And you have options within here to have this set to be disabled or to not spawn anything at all, so that you can choose which player start point via some blueprint code that you create later if you have something like a checkpoint system. So now to actually see these changes being made, uh, we need to change this back from simulate play. So we have our little cog behind the play button, which means this is still in simulate. So we're going to do the drop down again and go back to the selected viewport and we'll hit play. And we can see we now are at spawning a cube and uh, that's still being launched into the air. So we need to come back in, we'll go back to the event graph and we'll delink that. So to delink something in blueprint, you alt and then select the pin and that will remove the link. So now that logic won't be called. So now if we hit play again, we just spawn in the cube. It starts where the player start was selected and that would be the pawn that we were controlling if we had movement or anything like that included. So we've now set up a game mode. So the game mode is ready. And again, this will be saved for the entirety of this project unless we change it again later, which means without us needing to do anything, this project will now always know to load into our main map one and to use this game mode. And this game mode will also tell it to use this player that we've created as our default player. So everything's kind of set up for us ready to go. So with all of that done, I'd come back and hit Control shift s to save everything, make sure that everything's updated because we've made a few changes to the player and we've updated and created the game mode as well. So just make sure that everything's saved. Uh, with all of that saved, I'm going to leave this video here. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, found it useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around to colleagues or friends. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with the latest content coming from the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.